What's going on everybody? Kleep is Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the Google Pixel 6a to help you get more comfortable using it. Now before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And in case you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing and availability. But with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to change your wallpaper. This is a real easy thing to do. All you got to do is go to settings, which you can do one of two ways. You can either find the settings app in the app drawer, so as you can see right here, and I personally put it on my home screen, or you can pull it on the shade like this, and settings is going to be right here. So from the settings menu, you're going to go to wallpaper and style, and as you can see it, this is my wallpaper. To change it, go to change wallpaper, and now you can choose between your photos and photos already on the phone. So once you have a new wallpaper selected, you're going to get a preview of what it looks like on your home screen and what it looks like on the lock screen. And once you're happy with how it looks, hit the check mark right here. And it's going to ask whether you want it on your home screen, lock screen, or both. So I'm going to hit both. And now as you can see, we got a new wallpaper. So that was easy enough, but I'm going to show you a faster and more convenient way to change your wallpaper and also access some other settings for the home screen at the same time. So what we're going to do is press and hold a finger on the home screen like this. And as you can see, we got the same wallpaper and style menu, as well as widgets and home settings. So definitely real convenient. And from this menu, you can change your wallpaper really quickly simply by going like this. So that's definitely a real cool feature. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to manage which apps can send you notifications. Now if you just have a few apps, this is probably not going to be a huge deal. But once you start getting a bunch of different apps, especially when games are involved, the notifications do start to add up. And not only can this get annoying, but having a bunch of meaningless notifications also makes it a lot easier to miss something important. So I'm going to show you how to turn off notifications from certain apps so you only get the ones you want. So first things first, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to Notifications, and from this menu, go to App Settings. Now this is going to show you pretty much all the apps that have recently sent you a notification, and to turn them off, simply toggle them off here. And that's pretty much it. If you have a bunch of apps, I definitely recommend doing this, because again, if you have a lot of notifications, it can make important things easier to miss. Now we're going to take a quick look at the Sound menu. To get to the Sound menu, go to Settings, and from here, go to Sound and Vibration. Now the first thing we're going to see up here at the top is several different volumes. Media volume, of course, is going to be for if you're watching a video, listening to music, playing a game, something like that. Call volume, so pretty self-explanatory. When you're on the phone, this is going to be the volume of the earpiece. Ring and notification volume. Some phones do have the ring volume and the notification volume separate, but keep in mind with this phone, as you can see here, it is going to be controlled by the same volume. And then finally, we got the alarm volume. Under this, as you can see here, we got do not disturb. Now you don't have to go to this menu to turn it on. You can simply pull down the shade and go like this right here do not disturb but from this menu what you can do is schedule it so if you go here you can change some settings right here and as you can see you can also go to the schedule and you can set some conditions here to turn it on and off automatically under do not disturb we got the phone ringtone so you can change it here as you can see there are a bunch of different preset ringtones and you can also add your own notification sound is right down here and alarm sound is right below that we also got some options for vibration so as you can see by default, all the vibration is on, but you can turn it off and also change the intensity as well. At the very bottom, we got some other options. So dial pad tones, screen locking sound, charging and vibration sounds, and touch sounds. Keep in mind, all this stuff is on by default. I didn't turn it on myself, but if you want to turn it off, you can turn it all off here. The next thing we're going to go over is how to change your screen timeout time. Now, if you're ever in a situation where you're consuming content, maybe watching a video or reading, for example, and your phone falls asleep on you, this is definitely something you're going to want to know. So to change your screen timeout time, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to display. And from this menu, screen timeout is right here. So as you can see, I have mine set to 30 minutes, and this is really just for the purpose of this video. Normally I'd keep it at 1 or 2 minutes max, because if you have your screen timeout time too long, then if you forget to lock your phone, it's just going to stay on for a long time and drain the battery. But of course, this is going to be based on personal preference. As you can see, you can have it as short as 15 seconds, or as long as 30 minutes. And there's another option called screen attention, and this is basically going to detect your face with the front facing camera, and as long as you're looking at it, it's going to stay on. Now I haven't personally used it on this phone, but I've never actually used a phone where it doesn't work, so I'm assuming that with this phone it is going to work perfectly fine. So if you're consuming a lot of content like watching videos and stuff, I do recommend turning this on, and that way you don't have to set your screen timeout time itself so long. 
The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your system navigation. Now in case you haven't noticed with this phone, instead of the classic three buttons you might be used to, all we have down here at the bottom is just this one line. So with this phone by default, we are using something called gesture navigation. And in case you haven't used it before, let me show you how it works. So first of all, to go home, instead of pressing a home button, simply swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up like this. And to go back, swipe from the side. So gesture navigation is really easy to use once you get the hang of it, and in this day and age, more and more phones are getting gesture navigation by default. But if you don't like gesture navigation, which I know plenty of you don't, luckily with every Android phone I know of, you can get the buttons back if you want. So to do this, we're going to go to settings. From the settings menu, we're going to go to system. From here, go to gestures. And in the gesture menu, you're going to see an option called system navigation. Go here. And as you can see, again, by default, it will be in gesture navigation. But if you want the buttons back, simply hit three button navigation. And there we go. As you can see, we got the classic buttons back and you can use them just like normal. Now, I personally like gesture navigation, especially on a higher end phone like this that's actually fast enough to handle it. But again, I know a lot of you don't. So at the end of the day, it's really up to personal preference. And if you haven't already, I definitely recommend giving both a try. And that way you can see for yourself which one you like better. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to get to your power menu. Now, there are actually a couple different ways to do this. With the default settings, if you press and hold your power key, it's actually not going to open your power menu. Instead, it's going to open the Google Assistant. And personally, unlike Bixby, I actually do like the Google Assistant, and if you do actually use it, being able to open it like this is really convenient. Now even with this default setting, getting to the power menu is still really easy. All you gotta do is pull down the shade like this, and the power icon is right here, tap on this, and that's pretty much that. Now if you don't use the Assistant, we do have another option here. So what you're gonna do is go to Settings, from here, go to System, and from here, go to Gestures. And down at the bottom, you're going to see something that says press and hold power button. So go here. And as you can see, where it says hold for assistant, toggle this off. And now if you press and hold the power button, it's going to open the power menu instead. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use dark mode, and we actually have two different ways to do this. So if you simply just want to toggle it on and off, you don't actually need to do anything in your settings. All you got to do is pull down the shade like this. And dark mode will be somewhere in this menu, but it's not here by default. So what you're going to want to do is hit this pencil icon right here. Find dark mode. So let's see, it's right here. Press and hold. Drag it onto the other side. Now go back. Pull down the shade one more time. And dark mode is going to be right here. So now with dark mode in this menu, simply tap this icon and it's going to turn on. So pretty cool. And then if you want to turn it off, do the same thing. And there we go. Now that's the simple way to toggle it on and off, but if you want to schedule it, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to display. And from this menu, dark theme is going to be right here. Instead of just turning it on, tap on the actual bar. And from here, you can schedule it. So you can have it turn on at a custom time, or simply from sunset to sunrise. And finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to show and hide the battery percentage on the status bar. So as you can see up here right now, the status bar is really minimalistic, and this definitely does look really nice, but if you want the battery percentage up here to give you a better idea of where you're at as far as charge goes, you can add it pretty easily. So what we're going to do is go to settings, from here go to battery, battery percentage is right here, toggle this on, and now as you can see, the battery percentage is in the status bar. Now one last thing to keep in mind here is that if you want to leave it like this, but you still want to know where you're at battery wise from time to time, you don't actually have to add it up here permanently. All you got to do is pull down the shade and it's going to be here anyway. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Google Pixel 6a. If you want to learn more about this phone, again, I will be adding several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing and availability because this is always changing. But that's it for this one. As always, if you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kleepas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.